In today's video, we don't need these shock mock-up tools anymore because we have coilovers installed, so stay tuned. Welcome back to another video, everybody. Today we are discussing coilovers for the Mustang, and if you haven't already guessed, the shocks that I went with are from JRI Shocks. These are the single most expensive thing that I have bought for the car to date. Uh, this is their Builder Series double adjustable uh, coilover. These were $1,000 each, uh, but I wanted to make sure if I'm doing it, I wanted to do it once and I wanted to make sure I got ones that would make the car competitive and be what I want. So this is their Builder Series. These are a double adjustable and this is the, the five inch stroke one. So five inches of stroke right here. So total uh, extension is 17 and a half and compression is 12 and a half. As I said, these are their builder series. So these are for like kind of custom builds. I did have to supply them the corner weights from the car and then they did some custom valving in there for these. And this is the, the shock dyno chart on here. So that's pretty nice that they supply you uh, with this. It's uh, basically a, a force versus velocity. So it's the, a shock dyno chart for each one. And then you have uh, the little double adjustables down there. So rebound and compression. For the spring, I went with some hyper coils and I went with the 400 pound uh, spring for the coil over. The math kind of worked out to where it, it maybe should have been like a 425 to a 450 with the motion ratio that I was going with. But as I mentioned, I wanted to go maybe a little bit softer than uh, I had uh, previously, but these are super easy to change out and are not that expensive. Uh, so I'm going with a 400 first. And if I need to, I can always step up to like a 425 or a 450 for mounting these up as we did in the last video. We already got the, the top mount and the bottom mount all figured out since we had that uh, shock mock-up tool, which was really handy for getting everything to the right, uh, the lengths, because getting this guy down to the right uh, compression or ride height is not uh, very easy. All right, so I need to pull off this top mount so I can get the, the spring put on, and then we will get these installed on the car and see how they look. All right, the coil over is all installed. Uh, last video, we talked about that uh, the mount, but that is adjustable up at the top. So that is pretty sweet. I think that should hopefully Kind of work out for that then we have the bottom mount down there it's just tacked on there so that what i was worried about was this uh spring being really close to this upper control arm which it is and i've put it through some travel this is obviously not going to be its final ride height since there's not an engine in there we don't really have any weight so i got this turned uh adjust the way up to kind of get down to the appropriate ride height that it needs to be at. But I have kind of cycled this a little bit through its uh, paces and done some measurements to make sure that this spring is not really going to contact the, the upper control arm. It gets really close. Uh, so I might still bump that uh, bottom mount inboard just a hair, maybe like a quarter of an inch or something like that to just give a little bit of more um, factor of safety. Uh, you can also see that I have uh, the sway bar mount on here. It's not actually tacked on or anything, but it is placed up and kind of configured. It's just a little wing, th wing thing there and uh, that should work out perfectly for that. Uh, Otherwise, I'm thinking that the suspension is pretty much all done now. Um, 
Uh, I still need to get a longer one of uh, these for the tie rod. I have found a company that makes some that are the, the M14 on this side to a 5 8 on that side because I do have the uh, bump steer kit from Maximum Motorsports that is just a 5 8 bolt that goes through there and then a 5 8 uh, rod in right in there. So that is all pretty much done there. We'll get that kind of turned in and we can see that right now how things sit is looking like we're at uh, negative two, two and a half of uh, camber. So that is pretty sweet. Uh, that's kind of where I want to be. As you can see, I don't have any um, plates up in there. I can adjust the bottom out if I need to, to get a little bit more, but uh, pretty much as built, we're sitting right at a negative two and a half, which is kind of right where I wanted to be. I was thinking somewhere between negative two and negative three is where I want to start because it does have quite a bit of good uh, camber gain as it uh, travels up. All right, this was a super simple one this week. Uh, we did all the hard work of getting the coilover figured out for its mounting in the previous video. So for this one, just getting that slapped in there, super simple. We're kind of at the point where I can break everything back apart, get it all fully welded, get it all painted. I don't think there's really much left to do. I do still need to figure out the, the brake line kind of routing, but that's uh, not a big deal. And then getting the ABS wheel speed uh, routed back in there, but also probably not that big of a deal. Uh, but at this point, it is ready to go, I think. Uh, hopefully there's not really any other big issues that come up, especially with uh, just trying to figure out this uh, brake line routing. Uh, I also might need to change out the upper ball joint to maybe a slightly longer one because it does get uh, a little bit close to the bleeder valve for the brake caliper. And I don't want to accidentally in, in motion roll or things like that, uh, break off that uh, bleeder screw and then maybe potentially lose brakes. Uh, I think if it broke off, it would still, the screw would still be down in there and would not uh, spray brake fluid everywhere, but it's something that I don't want to uh, risk. I don't know if there's any like lower profile bleeder valves or bleeder screws or anything like that, but I think just putting in a slightly uh, taller ball joint in there will get that away from the brake caliper. It will slightly change my uh, geometry, obviously. It will change the roll center and maybe the, and the camber curves and things like that, but I don't think it's gonna be that big of an issue uh, changing that stuff out. And I mean, I have other adjustability in there that I can maybe try to get it back to where uh, it's happy. But I'm kind of at the point of breaking everything down, get it all welded, uh, and we're about there, guys. So close. Uh, as I said in the last video, I've got basically less than a month now to get the car ready. We still have to pull out this uh, electrical harness, finish up the harness on the, the engine for the distributorless ignition, and then get this engine in here and get the car tuned and driving again. So still a lot of work to do. So thank you guys for watching and we'll see you in the next one. Later.